Welcome to the Off-Roading Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm David. And this is the first time David, I think, is coming to us uh, not in a hotel room. Correct. <laughs> is, that, barn. Is, that, is that right? The, fun, the, I think I think the first one was a barn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first one you were at the barn, which that was like half like hotel, not quite. Barn. Was I in a barn? Why was it in a barn? You, it was in the forward control, like doing the. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, the guy's garage that I almost set on that I nearly set on fire. Actually, I did set it on fire. <laughs> and second time was hotel room because you were driving something like very soon after that. Um, and so, yeah, third, third time's not in a hotel room. So, no, no, no. They, different, here, different here, in, here in, um, nice california uh i've i've you know since we last spoke i've moved from michigan um from troy has and, anybody uh, given you shit for showing up in california and it's just like raining constantly there now he brought the weather um no i've, I've been giving them shit because they're all okay. bragging they all brag they're like oh everyone complains about the cost and the and the traffic but at least the weather's nice i'm like what are you talking about yeah, so I, I'm right. giving them shit, and it kind of it, it, they some some Californians are a little self conscious about it. Like, yo, this is not how it is, Dave. It's, I'm telling you, it's really nice here all the time, <laughs> dude. A couple of years back, actually, shit, it was probably like 2016 or 2017. Uh, so a couple we, years back, a couple of years back, we flew out of JFK or LaGuardia or something as a blizzard was happening. We were the last flight out before they shut the airport down. We got to California. And we were just hyped to not be in, you know, blizzard conditions. And everybody in California, it was like 55 degrees and sunny. And they were like, I'm so sorry. It's so disgusting here. And I was like, uh, I'm in shorts and a t-shirt and it's February. So not a know, blizzard. Everything's relative. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's very true. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, th- things are things are um things have changed a lot. My, so at the Auto- <laughs> at the Autopian on our website, um, Jason Torchinsky and quite a few others. They definitely they poke a lot of fun at me for well, they they keep saying I've gone soft because I bought a relatively new car and I'm um, experiencing things that I wouldn't have done necessarily in Michigan. Look, I'll be honest, in Michigan I was a junkyard dog. I was <laughs> I mean, I, I was wrenching like 24/7. I literally went to the junkyard weekly. Oh my god. Um at least and um I would <laughs> go out like in public with my full like um coveralls and a headlamp strapped to my head mm-hmm. i'd be like grocery shop and pushing a grocery cart Amazing. and people would be like I, I would look like and i just didn't care and it was like i would all, <laughs> just have grease all over me and it was I a mean, different that, life that's michigan you do that in socal you know where you are and you're gonna get a mildly different look at from everyone well you know what the reason is michigan's just kind of it just it's kind of conducive to that kind of thing because you've got so much space and cost of living is low. And it's like, mm-hmm. you might as well hoard cars. I mean, why the hell not? <laughs> that's, All right. So that's, so you argue. just, you just pulled up something. Uh, my, uh, my, one of my final junkyard trips in Michigan. Yeah. Uh, and I got some coveted mud flaps, factory mud flaps off of a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And I got this, it looks like a sort of a gunmetal gray painted grill um, which is the factory grill color for the base model Grand Cherokees, 93 and 94. Extremely rare. This was an incredible find. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> wh- while we're looking at this, have a look at that interior. Crimson red interior. Oh, yeah. Also yes. hyper, hyper rare. Oh, by the way, since we're, again, while we're on this topic, today <laughs> on the Autopian, um, I published a story about like um, uh, sort of people's like dream accessories and parts, like um, the the rarest Parts and accessories for for cars. So like I, I talked about like the Touareg and the Cayenne spare tire yeah. carrier. Yeah, like you can never find those, right? Oh my god, I, I don't think we've ever seen one. Yeah, right. I haven't either. And then I mentioned the Jeep Grand Cherokee's factory rear spare tire carrier, super duper rare. And I'm picking one up tomorrow. Ooh, but it's going to cost me two hundred and fifty smackers. Actually, here it oh, is. Man, it's on the left. That is a contraption. Look at that. Actually, let's scroll down. There's a bigger picture. Look at this. It's there's, not pretty. It's there's just a bunch so of... much going on. <laughs> I, okay, look, can, look, can we just like zoom in a little bit? Because I don't entirely know what exactly is happening. Okay, so <laughs> it looks like okay. There's one mount All right, that goes I'm just switching switching tabs that wouldn't couldn't get to it. Okay, so I'm a little worried that removing this from this Jeep is going to take me like six hours. But 
So look at it. There's one tube that comes from underneath. I assume it hooks up to the trailer hitch or something close to there. So it comes up underneath, under the exhaust, and then it goes vertical. And that, then you can see the vertical part there on the right side of the picture, that right there, like mm -hmm. it goes into the bumper, it looks like. There's like, it looks like it must, does like, it? it has to. It can't, I think it does, because why would that little bracket be there? I think that goes through the huh. bumper cover. And then let's just move down and to the left, and there's another like pillow bearing looking thing. And I think that ties into the hitch, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, but if you go up, you can see this big <laughs> – right above where the uh, where the uh, license plate normally sits is this big plate that you clearly have to screw into the hatch. Yep. Yeah. And then that's screwed in. And then there's like this weird – like it looks like a circuit breaker type thing that you yeah, would just – You know, it, like um, like at uh, Frankenstein, you would like hit that and – Yeah. And then he'd wake no. Up Do you know what I think that might be? That might be – so it's a swing out, right? It, I think it, that's a latch. It's probably a latch. Yeah. So you push it up to lock it in place, pull it down and it'll open know, up maybe. Yeah. So this is mm -hmm. obviously not the most elegant uh, spare tire carry, but factory is golden in my eyes in some ways. And also does, um, does, does ZJ rear window pop open? 96 to 98 optional on 96 and 97. Standard on ninety in ninety eight, if I have that correct. Oh. So my plan Optional. is because of, that's so because, interesting. So my plan, so from ninety three to ninety five, it was not. It was fixed, like you see here. Mm -hmm. um, if I have this correct, um, I well actually, I, my plan is to find a ninety six to ninety eight, probably a ninety seven or ninety eight, because that's where you see most of them with the pop up glass. My plan is to grab one of those and install it onto mine. It, the color is the same red, so it should fit great. Mm -hmm. and, and then I'm gonna put this on there because for an overlanding vehicle, especially if you're sleeping inside, I wanna have, be able to open as many windows as possible to get ventilation and all that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That'll be now, interesting. Whether this spare tire carrier thing will fit on that the newer one with the pop-out, I don't know, I don't know. It's not elegant. Actually, one thing I wanna mention is, have a look under that exhaust. You can see how low that bar oh, is. Yeah. And it just yeah. chews up the departure angle, which is a big problem for me because I offer the crap out of my cars. Um, but it's still the factory spare tire carrier. If I were to get an aftermarket one, I'd have to replace this whole bumper. And it, at that point, I'm just sort of, I don't know. I, I'm, I really like the way it looks as a factory machine. Mm -hmm. So I haven't, yep. I don't know. The it fact that funny. this is rare. Yeah. Be funny like to it. do. You know how everybody's like hitch skids and every, you know, all that stuff. You, you could do a skid for the bottom most cross member, the hoop that goes under for the, uh, for oh, the yeah, tire yeah, yeah. That'd be funny. A tire carrier skid. Yeah. <laughs> You're the only one in the world. Oh, man. I think you need to do that. <laughs> I really, because that's I really immediately did. what I thought of was like, you're going to drag the crap out of that bar. Yeah. So and then. Did, for context, David, I was just in Moab like two weeks ago with my stock Sequoia with skids and sliders. So like dragging hit... it. <laughs> I, I bet we were there at the same time. Oh, hundred percent. There were Probably. like, I was there the week before Easter Jeep, like the Wednesday, Thursday into Easter Jeep. So like everybody was there. Like the, I like got back and I looked at everybody's pictures and I was like, okay, we were all there at the same time. Cause everybody had the right amount of snow on mm -hmm. all of the peaks. Just at the right elevation. Yep. That's yeah, so I drove. So out at Moab, I was in a Bronco Raptor. And, way um, better than my Sequoia. <laughs> so this is the very first time that I've... So if you go to our Instagram, you can actually see me in the Bronco Raptor next to the... Uh, one of the Jeep Easter Jeep Safari concepts. The Actually, the Jeep Cher the 78 Jeep, the Jeep Cherokee on a... The 4xE. JL 4xE platform, yep. Um... So this was the first time I took like a press vehicle because the move has me a little behind on some projects. The Grand Cherokee <laughs> that I'm about to spend way too much money putting a flimsy spare tire carrier on, that my plan for that is to build the greatest Jeep ZJ ever, but not a, not really a modified one. I mean, a factory parts, mm -hmm. but the greatest ZJ ever. It's a five-speed base model, crank windows, manual locks. Um it's got, um, what do I have for it? Okay, I got the mud flaps. I'm going to have the spare tire carrier. I got full skids. And I found out that um, 
a nearby, actually, I went to a junkyard recently here in California. Turns out junkyards here, incredible. Overpriced, but incredible. Um, I found a ZJ. Someone had actually swapped 410 gears into the axles in the ZJ, which is is a hell of a find. Um, What's factory with the stick? With a stick or automatic, so they didn't really Same. distinguish 355s on the stick or automatic on the ZJ. But you could get 373s optional on the i6s and all the v8s had 373s and the auto was a three speed with overdrive uh auto was a four speed overdrive okay yeah, well i guess if you three speed with overdrive you consider yeah, that something yeah. separate yeah but they actually huh. made they made a few different autos um but anyway so i'm trying to build like this overlanding jeep with the modern glass pop out rear hatch and the stick and the mm -hmm. crank windows and spare tire carrying the mud flaps the skids um yeah but i'm doing it on the cheap the lift kit is going to be so get this on the grand cherokees to <laughs> lift to put a lift in the rear what you do is you take the springs from the front and you just put them in the back what kind of janky shit is that what that sounds about right no it, it's like it's that's how they actually if you if you get i think if you get like a rough country lift kit it comes with two springs and in the instructions it says take the front springs and put them in the back you oh, get three and a half inches the most rough country thing i've ever heard i've yeah <laughs> Say, you know, say what you will about their parts. That's freaking weird. I had no also, idea. they don't send you new front springs. They go, take your old saggy ass front springs and put them in the back. That'll get you your three inches of lift. Yeah, Not new ridiculous. ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Crazy. The old front springs. That's right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yep. That's crazy. ZJs are so great. You know what? No one likes ZJs except for a couple of people. They're, they're the, they're Weirdos truly like us. in the off road world. <laughs> genuinely underrated what's hilarious to me is that the xj everyone loves it which they should because the greatest jeep it's not the greatest jeep okay let me just specify it's here. good the, it's the good. greatest the greatest jeep of all time is the world war ii jeep let's get that out of the way yeah but yeah. but the so, best the best jeep of all time is the jeep cherokee xj it's the best jeep of all time and here's what i mean if you factor in um cost I think it's the best Jeep of all time. And I will I will gladly, if you have any uh, contenders, I will gladly dismantle them. I got nothing. Got nothing. The XJ, it can do everything. Everything. Yeah. And it's cheap. Now, you might well, say, was. well, what about... Was. You, 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 you might say, well, what about the JL? Isn't it better? Yeah, but it's expensive. JK, right. expensive. well, it had a 3.8 until 2012, and then now oh, they're, still, they're still yeah. expensive. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, so the XJ, amazing. Everyone loves it. The ZJ, for some reason, no one cares. It's the same vehicle. And like mechanically, it's exact, pretty much exactly yeah. the same. Dana 30 front axle, Dana 35 rear axle, uh, same 231 transfer case, same manual transmission. Yep. Four um, liter. Stick shift, four yep. liter. It's like uni similar, same unibody construction, pretty much. Um, it's almost exactly the same, except it's quieter mm -hmm. and it's a little bit bigger. But the um, on, only contender so I can think of potentially is the LJ that cost. that TJ extended caught. Yeah, right. And then at this but you're point, right. Austin yeah. Russ. Like, so, so you're actually right. Like that is the so I actually wrote an article uh, um, in 2018, I think it was. And it, it literally the article was um uh, why the I don't know. It was basically talking about why the LJ is the holy grail of Jeeps. Mm -hmm. And um, this is an article that I did not pitch to any of my editors. I just spent my weekend, like I spent like 12 hours over the weekend, just writing a post that no one had approved. And then I was like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to publish this today. And they're like, where'd this come from? And actually I remember one of my editors, he said, um, is this like based on a news peg story or what? Like, why'd you write this? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's passion, dude. It's passion. I'm like, I'm like, don't worry about it. Publish it. And it crushed. Like yeah. so many people read this so story. You're responsible for the, uh, the doubling in LJ price over the last five. I years. think I'm, I think I might actually mention in here that they've gotten pretty expensive. It's crazy. I mean, a khaki LJ Rubicon with a stick is the same price as it was brand new, you know? Like that is a crazy thing to think about. Isn't it's it? crazy. Well, and Ross, we've established on the show numerous times that like my, so yeah. of, of the LJ, there is a, <clears throat> I love, there's an author that I love to read. They made a movie adaptation of one of his books. There's an LJ that is featured in that movie and that truck, they have a movie edition Sahara Sahara. Oh, 
So it's the movie wow. Sahara, but they they have a movie. Oh yeah, movie. right. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those. Yeah, and it's not a crazy package. Like it's did literally they, like stickers. <laughs> did they sell it through Jeep dealerships like they did with the Tomb Raider one? I think so, but there's only like three thousand of them. By the way, I, I kind of like this the movie Sahara. Actually, I, I, I love, love that movie. Think. Yeah, it's a great movie. <laughs> so I love, but I love the book that it's based off. But anyway, yeah. But uh, Conor Hay was a great Dirk Pitt, but Steve Zahn is not out. Sorry. Steve so, Zahn is awesome. Also, Strange World mm-hmm. Wilderness, let the record show. Um, yes. I have an admission I need to make to the two of you. Okay. A, Hit it. I'm not entirely ashamed of it. Okay, let's first look at this. Holy crap. Yeah, that's that as is good as it gets. <laughs> so incredible. It's, it's not even that great. But I just. But wait, wait. Can, can we agree that those Rubicon wheels are. One of the best Jeep wheels. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, Jeep has had some great wheels. But for off-roading, look at the dish on those. That's fantastic. Yes. They're the Moab wheels. They're iconic. It's I would yeah. not yeah. have scraped my wheel if I had had those. They're By perfect. the way, all the modern Jeep wheels are totally flat. You know? It, it, it's, it doesn't look as good. Never, noticed, just like, never thought about that. But you can put as, those wheels on any Jeep going back to, like, a YJ, and it'll look good. Oh, absolutely. That's absolutely right. And they'll fit any Jeep. So those are five by four and a half bolt patterns. So they won't fit a JK, but everything, mm-hmm. everything from like, well, not SJ, but XJ, YJ, TJ, ZJ, yep. LJ, all that kind of eight, sort of late 80s to early 2000s. And actually turns out, and this is KK. relevant to my, yes. <laughs> and I think maybe the KK, I'm not 100% sure. Ooh. But um, it turns out, so I've been looking for wheels for my Overland build Jeep Grand, uh, Grand Cherokee. And I want your guys' opinion on this because ultimately I want to take this thing around the world. But I'm concerned because the ZJ uh, only came, the only steel wheels that it ever came with were 15s. And finding 15 inch tires in um, rural parts of the world, that's the issue. Difficult. Yeah. yeah. But, but like, you know, so, Maine, go ahead. Yep. How much tire do you plan to run? Like 32 inch, maybe 31, 32. Okay. okay. So, I mean, yeah, 15s are going to be hard to find. Right. So that's the thing. I'm like, okay, well, I got to get some 16s, but you could not get a steel 16 on a ZJ at all or XJ hmm. or, or YJ or any of that. So why do I want steel? I don't know. I, I always think that like, okay, a steel wheel, two reasons. If it cracks, you could weld it, but aluminum wheels are strong probably fine but the real reason is no one's gonna steal a steel a steel wheel, wheel. <laughs> that is true now that's true. to be to be clear they're gonna be wrapped in tires that are worth something but if you've got a shiny aluminum wheel plus tires it's just more incentive to steal yep. it yep so i mean i like i'm yeah. a steel wheel back to shape if you have to right i like the idea of a steel wheel and so i found out that Pretty much the only five by four and a half steel 16 inch wheel that Jeep ever made was the KJ's Steely. Hmm. Really? So, so I'm going to be running the Jeep KJ Liberty's steel wheels on my ZJ. That's possibly it's possible the KK had a steel wheel, but I don't think it did. Now I don't I mean, love the KJ's steel wheel because it's um it doesn't have as much dish as the ZJ's, but I we wrote an article um on the Autopian, it was actually our our uh, suspension engineer Hubert Mees wrote wrote about it, and he wrote about why vehicles with a rack and uh, with an independent suspension and a rack and pinion steering system have less dish in their wheels, hmm. and and it's all about scrub radius. Uh, hold on, is that the right <laughs> scrub? Uh, scrub yeah, radius, it yeah. It is about scrub radius, and he's right. You know, when I look at cars with independent suspension and a, and a rack and pinion rack and pinion steering. They don't have dish, and all the ones with mm-hmm. deep dish are steering box um, hmm. setups. And that is something that I don't think anybody of on our listening world has ever considered. It's a very random thing. And when when Hubert <laughs> when Hubert submitted that article, I was like, "This is incredible!" But like, it's actually okay. It makes sense. Hmm. Hubert means uh, you might you might go into the title real quick. Here's why car wheels are so flat these days. And no, it's not just aerodynamics and styling. That's my headline. <laughs> it's a bit long and funky. <laughs> it's a little long. 
But I enjoy what I a thinking. headline with parentheticals from an That's, SEO. Yeah, look at that. And look, look at the <laughs> commas and like, yeah. But actually, it, it worked pretty well because it, you know, got the point across. I think people yeah, when they yeah. when they think flat wheel, they think okay, styling, aerodynamics. But to see that there's another reason for it, um, you know, that scrub radius is a, is a, is relevant here, uh, is um, yeah, it's kind of cool. Just leverage, right? Is that the long and the short of it? Well, it's like. It, it it it's about um well just <laughs> you'll have to read yeah i'm gonna have to read it yeah this <laughs> but, is but if you imagine the aren't there if you imagine a, a a um a flat wheel um that is going to mount the mounting flange where it bolts up to the hub is going to be farther outboard mm -hmm. um so it's all about making sure that that kingpin axis from the upper ball joint to the lower ball joint that, that goes through a point that's well i don't know you'll have to read the whole thing i kind of okay. forgot it <laughs> yeah. we'll, uh, we'll circle back on that one once we I would understand say, what's happening <laughs> for the listener, okay. the diagrams are complicated <laughs> no no, but it's worth reading and you'll enjoy it but the point is um yeah the kj has a rack and pinion setup so its wheels are flatter so the steely that i'm going to get for my zj is not going to have very much dish which i'm not thrilled by but um is it it's the gonna, the it's the big five spoke? They're like thick spokes. It's a KJs? pretty it's a pretty basic wheel, honestly. The, yeah, it's like, yeah. It's, I think it's a five spoke. It's pretty big. It'll look fine. I might put uh, the center caps for my ZJ on it. I might drill some holes for it if they if they're not the right if they're not already right. So I think I think it's cool. this wheel that I'm grabbed. I could be. Oh come on, Google. Big images, Google. What's uh what's the general consensus on KJs these days? Because they had about 30 seconds when they were cool and people were doing like small lifts and you know 32s and you mean in 2002? Six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say when I was at Camp Jeep in 2005, uh -huh. they were yeah. they were popular and we referred yeah. to them as diet jeeps the whole time. Wasn't there also a diesel, a CRD diesel? Yes, there was, and I hear they're not the most reliable. And no, so, he, he, here's here's the thing. This, the is, the on those. this is the biggest image I could find. That's it. Wheel, by the yeah. way, yeah, <laughs> there it is. That's, That's a, extremely basic wheel, and there's usually there, usually there's a there's center cap it. with it. Yeah, this one's pretty beat to shit. So yeah, yeah. That's um, even yeah, by that, David Tracy standards, we're walking away from this wheel. It's, it's it, <laughs> I mean, I would absolutely run that. I would say it. Would. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a rattle can away from being beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll it'll do the job. It's simple. It'll do the job. And ultimately, the way I see this ZJ is it's going to be a Grand Cherokee with three and a half inch lift, some 32 uh, inch tires on KJ Steelys. It's going to have mud flaps, spare tire carrier. Um, and, you know, it's very basic. Four liter, five speed. Um, Hopefully it'll kick butt. Next question. <laughs> What's the uh, what's the weight limit for the tire carrier? Oh no! So a thirty-two on a steely. I wonder if that'll be on a okay. seventeen-inch or sixteen-inch steely and a probably fifty-five-pound tire. How much were stock tires back then? That's a good point because a stock tire was a two thirty-five, seventy-five, fifteen. That's the it's biggest like factory tire, and then forty pounds, and that was on an alloy. So I'm probably adding. I don't know. What am I adding? Ten pounds in in the wheel and probably twenty five pounds on the tire. Yeah. So you know we're adding some weight for sure, and it's very interesting. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I I bet you might be adding some support to your mount. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're probably I, yeah. We'll see. We'll we'll see. It, <laughs> honestly, it looks sketchy, man. Yeah. That spare tire carry looks so <laughs> jammed. Your, your shakedown run. Whoever is tailing you better be on the lookout. <laughs> By the way, why 250 bucks for that spare tire carrier? Not the best way to spend my money, but <laughs> it's so rare. It, I just can't resist. That's freaking hysterical. I, I think it's a good investment. Like, I think you could flip that in a couple of years after you've used it for a while. You'll never lose your money on it. Oh, okay. All right. Theoretically. I appreciate it. Well, who am I talking to? You know, I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay. We're not so exactly. This, this is an aftermarket one, but notice yes. that they had to replace the whole bumper. And it doesn't look bad. It's just, it's not, I really like the factory look. It looks all right. Yeah. 
And I I think this is his exhaust is move up a little gas plate skid tank. So this guy, AZ Off-Road, I've, I've been following him for a while. So okay. his setup is about what mine's going to look like in many ways. Because his is red, his is um, 95 and back um, styling, so pre-facelift. He's he's running 31, 31 by 10 and a halves there, mm-hmm. which I think on the Z on the XJ 31 by 10 and a half looks fantastic. I think on the ZJ they look a little bit small because the wheelbase. Okay. Yep. But um he's got to skid it out and you know it mine's gonna look more or less kind of like this, maybe a little yeah. bit, you know, a little bigger tires. And I have a winch up front, a free nice. eBay winch that's going up front. <laughs> it's gonna awesome. be a budget build. I what, uh, we, we are fully on board with drive what you have. So, oh yeah, hundred um, well, percent. How, how much? Go ahead, Dave. Currently, what I have is a Jeep that's never run. Um, that does not have an interior <laughs> because it's it was a parts Jeep, and it's been sitting for years. So I don't really, I have nothing. But actually, this brings me to a point. I have, like I was, I think I started saying that I may be slightly ashamed. Um, you okay, did. You did. Okay. Before we get into the shame, I sold that because it was too <laughs> nice. <laughs> that is not shameful. Really. I mean, it was literally fucking up. Like it was literally too nice. I was like, I can't off-road this. I have to get rid of it. So Amazing. anyway, um, okay. So here, here's where the shame comes in. I had a choice. I wanted to buy a more modern car because um, I. I don't know. I just, oh, there it is. There's the one I kept. <laughs> By the way, let me just point out the trim that's missing on the side there is missing, not because I bought it with the trim missing, but because I had to tow it out of my my garage because it doesn't run. And I towed it into the side of the garage and tore, <laughs> tore the trim, which is unobtained. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, and, it's not amazing, but it's funny. And I put a bunch of, I, I ripped out some of the tabs that hold the trim to the door. So oh, I'm going to have to use like, no screws and washers, but I'll get it to look right. I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it's not an amazing shit. You can see there's like, um, but look, imagine this thing. Okay. You got to think potential. Okay. Don't, don't, don't think about how it looks now. Think potential. Okay. So you I'm going to put that eye of the beer holder. <laughs> that's right. So look, imagine putting some trim on that door, putting some nice condition wheels on it, replacing both front and rear, uh, uh bumper covers. Uh, painting that um, red trim piece behind the rear window, um, installing new lights, mm-hmm. um, which, by the way, I, you know, when I was in Germany visiting my parents, I picked up Euro headlights. That's right. Amber indicators. Well, you, should, <laughs> you should pull those up because the ZJs with the Amber indicators. That was a thing? Woo, they look good. They look damn good. I had no idea. Like I said, I'm building the greatest ZJ of all time on factory parts. Though the KJ oh. reels, the KJ reels, I'm not sure about because I don't know if they count because it's a different model. But anyway, moving on. Orvis interior. Can you can you get an Orvis interior? Uh, okay, that so, would make it the actual greatest of all time. I think those are power only seats, and I don't want power oh. seats. Mm. Yeah, that would uh, that would be deal breaker. I, that was such a weird interior, though. You know what was weird? The ZJ had some strange special editions. There was the TSI, which was like the purpley one, the gray yep. purple one. That was which, as 90s as it got. Which had a special wheels, TSI only wheels. What even is TSI? No one knows. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, the first thing, if you Google uh, ZJ TSI, the first thing that comes up is Jeep Forum. The question being, what does TSI signify? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows uh, what TSI is. It's like wait, those were wait. I'm having such a hard time finding the amber indicators. <laughs> oh, okay. Here's what you do. Oh, okay. Those actually were TSI here's what you only do. wheels. So to find the amber indicators, get this. The ZJ Grand Cherokee, they built obviously they built them in Detroit. Right. They also built them in South America. They might have built them somewhere in Asia, but in Europe, they built them in Austria at Magnus Steyr's plant. And in fact, the code is no longer ZJ, it's ZG. So if you type in Jeep ZG, that's the Euro model that's ZJ so Grand Cherokee. And it has the amber front lights. That is... Even Google's trying to correct me. It's like, yeah. do you mean ZJ? Like, no. That is and different. while Something we're on the topic, know. That, that ZG came with 
the 2.5 liter Via Motori turbo diesel, the same one that was that's in my uh, manual Jeep Grand, uh, um, excuse me, Chrysler Voyager in Europe, mm -hmm. also came in some Alfa Romeos and in some uh, Land Rovers. Hmm. It's this little Italian turbo diesel engine they had in the ZJs. Via Motori, yeah. the same company that was building the uh, the eco diesels. Exactly, that's right. The three liter eco diesel for the JL yep. and the Ram. And the Grand Cherokee, the WK2. Oh, right. Grand yeah, Cherokee. the WK2. Yeah. That's right. Oh, man. All the time. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Mm, yeah those are cool. cool. Those are cool. I, yeah, I didn't realize those were the TSI wheels. I knew somebody who had one of those when I was Ooh, a kid. Oh, really? Yeah, because I those I thought those wheels were just ZJ wheels. That is what? interesting. Yeah. Man, you, your whole, your whole worldview is completely different <laughs> than mine. You thought TSI <laughs> wheels... We're just generic ZJ wheels. Those those wheels are incredible. Given it was probably just one car I saw, you know, regularly. This is but, close as uh, I found, but it's definitely the wrong headlight. Yeah, okay, I don't understand how this is so difficult. Type in. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Deep ZJ, Germany. And what you'll get is a bunch of pictures. Jeep ZG, Germany. There's a way there's a wiki me wiki whatever uh file that you can you just have to type in germany and you'll uh you should pull you should pull it up okay oh now, now i'm going for large enough images because <laughs> they're so small all right i, I still I got one not buying a uh five i don't have one fuck what i got one why don't you just pull it up can i do that is it on your stuff you post oh, look, it? actually can i put it i'll put it in the zoom here's what i'll do and then you pull it up. Uh, there's a chat. Here it is. Ooh, yep. boom. Get ready. Get ready. Everybody prepare your souls because this is this is the thing of beauty. Now, this is the facelift model that I'm showing here, but uh, they're interchangeable. Perfect. I'll share a wiki page eventually. <laughs> I'll share it eventually. Yeah, that's them. Oh, okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to share another another link for you. Here you go. I want I want this V8 badge though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Low, oh yeah, grill badge. Low fog okay. lights are so cool. I shared another link because this link shows the same uh pre-facelift model that I have. So this is what it's going to look like. Um and yeah, it's um I'm I'm like I'm outfitting this thing with rare stuff. Mud flaps, tire carrier, European only headlights, 5-speed manual. <laughs> Where are we in the locks. world? Is the <laughs> stick is the five speed full time four wheel driver? Is it two? No, uh, four, it's selectable. It is Which, selectable. Um, okay. What did they call that transfer case system at the time? They called it command track. Command track, right? It's the same thing that was in the XJ. Okay, look at that. That's what mine's gonna look like. Look at look at the amber indicators there. Normally those are white. I like yeah. Amber. What I won't have, you see the huh. turn signal repeater there on the fender? Yeah. I, yeah, I won't have one of those, but maybe uh, I can find, I feel like importing that from Europe would be a little ridiculous. The might. whole fender? Yeah, because you'd have to get the whole pre-cut. <laughs> or I could cut a hole and like try to get the little, no, nah, there's no way. Mm. No. And then like, is there even a connector? In, no, probably not. Probably <laughs> not for your wiring harness. Like you'd have to ask. Just, uh, just buy the lights and like 3M take them. Onto your fender, so it looks like it has. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just get like a an orange like cup and just like put it, just glue it on there. Make it, make it look. Imagine <laughs> having a fake turn signal indicator. Like that oh, would man. be the deepest hey, cut. <laughs> that's not the worst defense out there, though. You need one of the like the Amazon uh like rechargeable lights that you can hit with a remote to like just have it run oh, that little God. light. <laughs> yes, that's right. Like oh, it, just, I saw somebody do rock lights the other day with like self-powered like light switch things they just like taped them into their wheel wells <laughs> oh what about the like closet ones where you just it's a big circle and you go boop, yeah and you push that's it what they that's that what was, they wow. tape into their wheel well for rock I, I respect it but what yeah i respect it okay it so course. we need to get to the shame that i was trying to bring up <laughs> so i had a choice i got to la and i was like you know i think i want a more modern vehicle because these highways are spitting these old cars out they're, they're chewing them up and spitting them out in part because my old cars are not in amazing shape, but I will say, look, I drove a 65 Plymouth Valiant all winter in Michigan. No problem. I've been driving my 85 J10 all winter. No problem in Michigan. There's not as much traffic. 
it, it, the roads are wide and you can take surface streets like Woodward mm-hmm. Avenue will take you all the way down to downtown Detroit. Yep. Here in L.A., you got to get on the highways if you want to get around, really. You can mm-hmm. take some surface streets, but they're a bit of a nightmare. Like Cluster they're not Fox. like straight and wide. Yeah, they're parking, people parking on both sides. So I'm like, let me get something a little bit newer because I got to like commute to work now and um, I have like responsibilities now. I got to like, so it's like, um, I can't just be ranching 24 seven. So I had a choice to make. Do I buy a Jeep Wrangler JL, a vehicle that I helped engineer or do I buy something else? And I just specifically a BMW i3. Now I realize in the overlanding crowd, this does not make sense. Uh, in the overlanding crowd, why would you buy an i3? But hear me out on this. Maybe there was logic, or maybe you guys will both roast me. I'm fine either way. Okay. Does, so, does this one have the range extender in it? That it little does. One? Sure okay. does. I'm fully on board then. There will be no roasting here. I Whoa. love Okay. Love All right. If I yeah. was commuting to work regularly, I would probably have an i3. Okay, so we're on the same page here because here's yeah. the way I think of it. If I get a JL, it'd be sick, and you know, especially in California, you can take the roof off or whatever. But in many ways, there'd be a lot of redundancy with um, my current fleet in some ways. Mm-hmm. You know, I have vehicles that can off road. The, the Grand Cherokee ZJ is very good off road, it's pretty comfortable on road, it's not bad. Um, and um, it's got a manual transmission and it's like it could do the off roady stuff that I'd want the JL, and it gets the same fuel economy. Honestly, the JL mm-hmm. does not get great fuel economy, so it's like, okay, why would I buy the JL? Okay, because I helped engineer it, because I take the roof off. What would because I pay for? Yeah. What would I pay for a JL? I wouldn't really buy a used one because they don't depreciate enough. So I'd buy a new one, and really, the way I'd want it, it would cost me thirty five grand maybe mm-hmm. for the two door. So I'm like, okay, do I want to spend thirty five grand on a car that? It's primary like purposes like are already taken care of with my other, you know, with the ZJ when it's finished <laughs> or, or do I want to get something that is an engineering Marvel? Let's be honest. The JL is a Marvel. No question. Is it an engineering Marvel? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Says the man who worked on the engineering part of it. <laughs> well, to be clear, the cooling system is an engineering Marvel. <laughs> I, I mean, look, we can it's all agree. Right. We can all agree it is a it's a simpler vehicle, you know. It's stick axles and a, you know, it's conventional automatic or a manual transmission, mm-hmm. old school transfer case. It's not that modern, plug in hybrid notwithstanding. So it's like, okay, do I spend thirty five grand on a JL? Gets bad fuel economy, similar to my ZJ offer in some ways, or do I get something totally different? Something that introduces me to the electric world, something that allows me to drive right past those damn gas stations that have $5.25 per gallon fuel, yep. you know, on their signs. Something that is um, a genuine engineering marvel. I mean, it really is, and it's way cheaper. So I started looking into the i3 because my um, my colleague Thomas Hundel, who writes for the Autopian, is talking to me about it because he's a huge BMW file. He's like, oh, the i3 is cool, man. And I started looking into it. And I had... Let's be honest. We all knew about the i3 when it came out, 2013. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, it was uproar. We, That's why we knew about it. Yeah, but none of us gave a shit back then. It makes, and there's a reason for it, because it costed 50-some grand. Right. But a completely underrated car. I, I remember I went to Monroe & Associates back in, like, 2015, 2016, and they showed me, so this is a benchmarking company, and they showed me, uh, the i3 that they had completely torn down and done an engineering analysis on. It's like carbon fiber reinforced plastic body on an aluminum uh, skateboard chassis, all aluminum suspension components. It's a, yep. It's got a rear mounted electric motor that's bolted to a little scooter uh, um, twin. Is it a twin? I think it's a 600 cc twin mm. scooter engine that acts as a range extender. And it's the interior is the most incredible interior. It's just it's unreal. Is the it's best. so freaking beautiful. It's um the one that I got is called the Giga World Interior, and it has this eucalyptus wood dash and this leather and wool seating. It's like you're in this Swedish lounge. And every time I drive this car, I feel like I'm in the future. 
And it's a car that I spent 10,500 bucks for. It was the cheapest i3 That's in the country. So Literally 135,000 miles. Oh, there it is. Giga World Interior. It's, it's so, so good. Oh, it's so good. And so now, so basically I'm thinking if I had bought a Wrangler, base model sport Wrangler for 35 grand with half doors, whatever, I would be rowing through my own gears. I would be unzipping my windows. Uh, it, it where it would I'd be sitting on cloth seats, you know. It, I'd have a tiny, you know. It would be a very basic machine. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, my i three parks itself. It, it literally parks <laughs> itself. I let off the steering wheel. It parks itself. It has adaptive cruise control. The interior is just unreal. It, it is a carbon fiber so car. Cool. It gets eighty, you know, eighty some miles of range on, on on electric, plus another seventy on gas. It is good. Such a fun little like whatever, and it was a third the cost of the Wrangler. Um, obviously, I still love the Wrangler, but like I'm for now, you're just gonna have to deal with me um, obsessing over the i3. Look at this thing. Yeah, I think so. We're five years out from everybody going like full circle on it and being like, wait a second, that was well, kind of a cool idea. This is a conversation right. I have with my brother-in-law all the time because he's like, I don't want an EV. I don't want an EV. I don't want an EV. And I was like, I also don't want an EV. Mm -hmm. But a plug-in hybrid makes a fuck ton of sense. Yep. 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 This car, so I drove it um, all weekend. And it mostly was, you know, it, the 86 miles that I made that I did um, was enough for, for the most part. But on the way to work today... <clears throat> On the way to work, ran out of charge. So, okay, ran out of charge. I would be toast if this thing were an EV, but mm -hmm. the little scooter engine in the back, fired up. It's a little, you know, yep. it's a little, little bit of a drone back there. Got me to work. And um, and actually, so here's a weird thing about the i3. It has, <laughs> in the US, it has a 1.9 gallon tank. In Europe, it has a 2.4 gallon tank. You might be thinking, is it a different tank? No, it's the same tank. They software limited the fuel tank what? size on the i3. What? Yes, it's their most ridiculous thing. So people in the US, they put their scanner in the OBD2 port and they actually program their tank to be bigger. It's that's ridiculous. Like, that's like it's tuning so, your car for, uh, so the, for EV yeah, more horsepower. The tune i3 is to make it uh, yeah. put more fuel in the tank. That's fine. That's correct. Terrible. A half a gallon extra fuel. Oh, so my that, gosh. And, and there's another tune that you can do. So here's the, here's the problem with the way the i3 works. You run it on electric, and when it runs out of electric, then it runs the gas engine. The problem is the gas engine is a 600, like a 600 cc little scooter engine. 647 is what I saw. Okay, six. Okay, it doesn't make it. Is it a twin? Yep. Okay, parallel twin. So as you can imagine, 650 cc twin doesn't make enough power to get you going 80 miles an hour in the house. It's literally physics doesn't make sense. So the tw the engine doesn't the ICE doesn't actually power the wheels. It just acts as a generator, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so it can only go about 55 ish on the highway. So once you run out of battery, you now you're stuck doing 55. So one tune that people do in addition to expanding the tank size is they tune their car such that you can click a button on the radio, like the number eight or whatever, the preset, yeah. click the number eight. And what it will do is it'll fire up the gas engine when you're at 75% battery. That way you can go on like a 500 mile road trip and because your generator is running, your battery's not going to drain as fast. Mm -hmm. and, and you just keep refilling that 2.4 gallon tank every, you know, 80 mile, 90 miles, which is not great, but I mean, it's better than recharging, yeah. having to recharge all the time. Yeah. So that's like, that's, uh, yeah, that's how they're doing this thing. Who, the, who knew? That is so strange. <laughs> My favorite part is I think of fuel stops being like anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes for you pull off, you're filling the tank, the suburban, you're getting the kids through the bathroom. You know how long it takes to fill 2.4 gallons? <laughs> that's a good point. I mean, it's, like, it's like three minutes. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's, that's usually a good about what I fill on the quad. Yeah. Yeah. Like filling that 32 gallon suburban tank takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I three is like done. So why not a vault? So I thought about the vault, and I'm like, so I'm a car enthusiast, of course. Um, and I, I was thinking, you know, I'm interested in getting some kind of EV because I'm, I'm really interested in just sort of experiencing it. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it nowadays, 
e, the EB space is it's a rich person's place right now. Like these are rich yeah. person's toys. That's 100%. just reality. It's where we're at. If you want to buy a cheap EV, you're kind of limited to some shit boxes. Like the, early, the Mitsubishi. The er, oh, the <laughs> IMEV. Yeah. Oh, IMEV. IMEV, a bit of a shit box. Much respect to my friend Kevin, who owns one. Um, <laughs> then there's um there there's the early Nissan Leaf, which I mean just, right. if you look at if you look at the range on those, it depletes like over the years, like crazy. Um, and then um there's uh what else is there? Um other EVs, uh, kind of early EVs. 500E. Okay, yeah, I was going to mention the 500E. Also have battery depletion problems. And they didn't have a ton of ranges to begin with. So there's not a, you know. So none of those are interesting to me. They're, they're, a they're golf shit boxes. E? Anyways. E-golf. The golf, e-golf, e-golf, sorry. The e-golf is kind of, it's kind of whatever. It's like, a, it's not a really interesting car to me. Yeah. Wasn't then you there start a getting, Spark EV? There was. Also yeah. similar like battery Ship depletion box. issues, yeah. but I heard it was quick though. Um, and then you get to cars like the Volt, and the Volt I like because you know you can get your thirty five miles to to work, and then you can drive on the gas engine at that point for however many miles you want. And those cars are reliable. The Volts they last a long time. The batteries seem mm-hmm. to do okay. But there's a very big difference. Like there's a one of the reasons I didn't just buy the i three because it was an EV. I bought the i three because it's an an electrified car that satisfies the enthusiast side of me in a okay. way that I don't think the Volt would. Okay. Like the, uh, the Volt. All the sense in the world that makes. Like the Volt I think is cool, but it feels like a Chevy Cruze that just happens to have some amount of electric ability. And I'm not interested in the Chevy Cruze. Yeah. The I3, when you drive the it. Diesel, feels... There was a diesel manual Cruze. <coughs> oh, that is cool. You know, that right. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. But, you know, there's no stick shift on the Volt. The Boring. I3. Whereas the Volt feels like a cruise with some electrical capability, the i3 feels like a like it is essentially built like a supercar. Like the it i8. Just, yeah, it's it's built like a supercar, and you 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 sit in that interior, you're like, I feel like I'm in something special right now. It's not lightning fast; it doesn't have a ton of range, but there's something about this car that is special. And like, does if you're an use, enthusiast, does it use it, the word monocoque? Oh. It, um, no, actually, I wouldn't use oh, that. Okay. Well, you could call the carbon <laughs> fiber part of it a, mono, a monocoque because it's kind of a – but there is a battery and a suspension that's, you know, all hooked up to it. It's um, okay. – yeah, this thing is – it's it's for me, it's like a great way to get into the EV world but, like, still have an enthusiast car that's affordable. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. actually kind of the only one, actually, when I think about it. The only car that really fits those very narrow parameters I'm looking for. Not too expensive, enthusiast car – Electric and has a gas hybrid and helper. has a gas helper, yeah, which I think I, is critical. My off road, uh, I'm tie in here is you have pizza cutters for tires, yeah. Look at those things, those look at how like, skinny they are. Those look at them, motorcycle tire than pizza cutter. That's yeah. you're gonna you're gonna stay on top of all that off road stuff. <laughs> That's oh, oh, this thing's gonna slice through whatever. Okay, fun thing about the i3 so these mm. tires they're so narrow. And as you can imagine, a huge tire like this, those are, I think these are 20s in the picture. I have 19s. Good mine. Lord. We're about a, to find out. A super tall but narrow tire um, like that is, is literally specific to that car. So it's not like you can just go off the shelf a tire. So this means you have very few choices for tires and they're very expensive. And what sucks, they wear out so damn fast. Even though they're like super eco tires. Oh yeah. my God. 155 60 20. Yeah. You yep. said the 19-inch rims? Mine's are 19s. That that mine are 19s, yeah. But so they're expensive. There are not a lot of options. And they people say that they are replacing them every six to ten thousand miles. Whoa. Good lord. That's like motorcycle tires. Shit. That's really bad. Those are my wheels right there. Yeah. So just think about that. You have a seven hundred dollar expense that you would have one sixth as many times like. If you had a gas, a normal car with normal size tires, because you could get 60,000 miles out of an eco, like normal size yeah. tire, you know? Yeah. Like you're paying $700 six times instead of $500 or $400 one time. Mm-hmm. It's in the end, it's not, you know, an economically smart prospect, honestly. But yeah, there is, as per tire rack, one choice for those tires, and they are. 
Buck yeah. fifty each. Buck forty five. Um, I'm seeing two fifty for front. Two two sixty three for rears. Oh, okay, okay. So, so that's for set. Ah, uh, no, that's per tire. Well, per tire, Jiminy Cricket. What? Yep. The grand <laughs> no. for tires on tire rack. Wait, I mean, is that Jiminy. the? Is that the 19s or the 20s? Oh, no, it's the, that was the 19s. Go, Jiminy. Good lord. Yeah, the uh, the 20s are actually cheaper. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh. that is so interesting. That's such an interesting car, man. Every time I see one of those, it's like a Porsche drives by and it's like, oh, nice. You know, an i3 drives. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, dude, when you I see one, it's so rare. Like, the only person I I know who has any um, experience is, is is the somebody I know through Twitter, uh, and I'm going to mispronounce his name, and I'm going to apologize to him on Twitter tomorrow. Is T- Tamerlane Tamerlan? He's he's like NorCal based, but he had an i3 for a while, and now I think he's been in like a shitstorm of like Plymouth Voyager shit that's been awful for him, kind of stuff. Um, but he had an i3 for a long time, and. He loved it, but I think the cost of ownership with tires and stuff like that caught up with him, hmm. and so he swapped out of it. It's funny because so some people, you know, I mentioned, yeah, I get to drive past these five dollar a gallon whatevers. There's something about having to regularly pay a lot of money, like regularly versus like a one time expense. Because let's be honest, if I had bought a three thousand uh, dollar Toyota Corolla that got thirty five on the highway and twenty two in the in town. I would save way more money, but I'd still be paying 60 bucks a tank. And that would hurt a little bit. You know, it's like every mm-hmm. single day I'm getting beat up. Whereas now I just, okay, I drop the 10, five on the car every now and then I spend the tires. It, <laughs> it's not logical. You know what right. I mean? It's totally not. It's logical. Uh, speaking of logic, can we talk about the Australia trip? <laughs> oh, yeah. the, the, we're about to talk about no logic whatsoever yes okay, okay. let's so, let's get into it uh tell the listeners what the inspiration for the trip was what happened on the trip and where you left it okay i mentioned earlier in this podcast that in michigan i used to daily drive a 1965 plymouth valiant in the winter and a three on the three on the tree it was great actually it was really reliable slant six anyway um one of our readers one of so I was I was doing that while I was at Jalopnik. One of our readers is a guy named Lawrence Rogers. He's from Dubbo, New South Wales, Australia. And he sent me, he was like, oh, I'm a big fan of Valiants. We had also we had bunches of Valiants in Australia. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And he even sent me a sticker all the way from Australia to Detroit. It says another Valiant still going strong. I put that on my on my Valiant sub bumper. It's amazing. Anyway, so he and I so were strange. We just, he and I just became friends over social media. And um, he eventually, um, you know, we were just talking. He would show me some things at his, you know, in his home in Australia. And, it, and he showed me his own Valiant, which is like so different because it's a Ute, which is like a pickup truck version of the Valiant that I, I owned the sedan. I didn't realize they made a pickup truck version of a freaking Plymouth Valiant sedan. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So he, um, you know, you know, you know, became friends. And then one day he's like, mm-hmm. hey, look. So he's a he does farm insurance um out in the middle of the sticks out there in, in uh, New South Wales and uh so he sees all sorts of crazy cars out in the farms and he's like hey look at this one I came across um at this old farm it's a Plymouth Valiant uh with uh your slant six and it's a truck version I was like man that thing is sick he's like yeah the guy only wants like five hundred Australian for it I'm like all right and it, it it was just a total shell it was a piece <laughs> of shit it was literally buried in the dirt. And I'm like, oh, really? Well, you should buy it, and I should fly over, and um, and we'll fix it. And it's only a uh, hundred bucks more than your uh, your ZJ spare tire carrier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and so he actually buys it. Like the next thing you know, he sends me a picture of him trying to tow it up onto a rant flatbed, but the the tires were seized, and and he had to like do some all sorts of janky shit. But he eventually got it up onto a flatbed and towed it back to his house. He's like, all right, when are we doing this? I'm like, oh shit. I actually am, I guess I'm going to Australia. I've never been to Australia, but I own a car in Australia now. So this thing was a, just a piece of garbage. <laughs> like I'm telling you the worst conditioned vehicle I've ever owned by a factor of a thousand. And if you've looked at my postal oh. Jeep, that thing, I had to weld a two foot part of its rusty frame. Like yeah. it yeah, was, was worse was than bad. that. That's, that's a yikes. 
That's a it was yikes. so bad, in fact, that when I got to Australia and looked at it, I said, we can't fix this. It's impossible. So I, I had booked a five-week trip to Australia to fix it. Got there. I was like, impossible. But luckily, Lawrence had purchased a parts you. And that was literally, it was less complete than the main vehicle. It was just a shell. Literally just a just the chat didn't even have body panels. You can see the shell right there on the left. So the the parts car is on the left. The main project's on the right. The main project I looked at. It, I'm like, it cannot be fixed because it looked like it had been jumped. The frame was bent. The floor is a unibody. The floor was just crushed up. There was no way I was going to get that through Australia's strict inspection. No freaking way. So I was like, okay. Um, is all hope lost? Is it like I just came here for five weeks? I'm just gonna so we're gonna screw around. Well, then we put the parts you'd up, and the frame was solid. The unibody was rock solid, and I'm like, but we only have five. We actually at that point we only had four weeks. I'm like, we have four weeks, and all we have we're starting our starting point is this shell. It doesn't even have body panels on it. No electrical system. No seats. No dash. No engine. No transmission. It, the the axle's wrong. I have to literally I have to replace. Everything, no exhaust, no lights, nothing. It's just the body in white. And I'm like, well, we might as well freaking, let's just go for it, right? Let's just freaking go for it. And Lawrence is like, you're right, mate, let's do it. And he was like amped because he's like, you know, here's a journalist he's been reading for years. And he's mm -hmm. like, he's going gonna to wrench with a journalist he's been reading for years on a car that he knows like the back of his hand. Lawrence, <laughs> I'm telling you, this dude, he How knows life. <laughs> valiance like no one australian valiance so he's like dude she'll be right he I'd always say i'm like dude there's no way this is gonna work he's like she'll be right she'll be right she'll be right no matter what like we go we buy an engine it's bad he's like she'll be right we get another engine it's bad he's like oh she'll be right i'm like we've gone through three engines he's like no worries mate no worries i'm like what are you talking about okay so i'm not really sure what these are this is, that's not it this is actually lawrence's that's article Oh my god. Oh, this god. is it. Okay. So he's been writing some stuff here and there. Um, but anyway, so um so he and I, oh, there it is, the final product. <laughs> he's put some uh, decorations on it. Uh he and I spend four weeks every single day for a, you know, in my case, like it, at one point we spent a 26 hour day wrenching on re like for 26 st like straight hours um wrenching on this. I think it was Man. it was crazy. What and um, we turned it into this. What you to keep going for 26 yeah. hours? Well, I, I uh, um, they have these um things called Anzac biscuits. They're like, Anzac stands for Australian, New, New Zealand, 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 something. And it's they're like these patriotic biscuits that whatever. Yeah. I freaking, I ate those things all day, every day in the garage. Okay. Sometimes, <laughs> that, sometimes that's all I ate. Sometimes we had these uh, sausage rolls, which is like, really high density, like, you know, basically some like hot pockets in a way. Mm -hmm. So after four weeks, we were able to get it. Like we found body panels. We found an engine. He had an engine sitting around that we tested. Okay. We threw it in there. We bolted up a random transmission he had bought from a farm. And then we figured out, okay, we took the bench <laughs> out of the other ones. We, the whole town came together. Like we, we, a, a, um, a tractor farmer came in. He was like, Oh, I'm good with electrics. No problem. Tractor farmer com comes in, goes through the wiring, finds shorts everywhere because the wiring had been under the, you know, probably 30 years, just been getting bombarded with sun and rain. So a tractor farmer came in. The local um, the local uh, uh, hot rod guys came in and they started like doing metal work and welding exhaust. One of Lawrence's neighbors, a guy named HUD, hot rod legend in Australia, Australia wide. He happens to be his neighbor in this tiny little town. And um. <laughs> That's HUD comes over and just helps with all the welding of the holes because you have to get through inspection. And we're just like, oh. that's the starting point right there. You can see it's like, this oh. is the nice side of it. There's no glass, no door panels, zero. Anyway, um, after four weeks, we got it through inspection. And then I took it on the trip that that was the main point of it all. It was uh, from his town about, I think it was 300 or 400, 300 miles to uh, the biggest Ute show in the world called the um, Denny Ute Muster. It is a the biggest Ute show on earth, and also a country music festival. A festival headlined by some really big names. This in th this year it was Brad Paisley. So the thing made it there. The only things that happened is the the 
speedometer basically exploded because it hadn't been greased. And then the second thing is the uh, the alignment got so bad when we put this heavy like rhubar on the front, bull bar on the front, mm -hmm. that uh, it wore one of the tires and uh, it blew up. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> so the Denny Ute Muster is just crazy. Like it's like a Burning Man in Australia in some ways. Like people are just going nuts. Oh, just man, like Aaron. naked it's... people are like running around naked and like you know drinking doing all sorts of strange shit um does it yeah, get it more wild. australian than that yeah. no but the... it seems very australian it is a country music redneck festival with utes and uh and i show up i showed up i should show you the picture of what mine looked up like uh, finally <laughs> um i showed up in this really feral as they call it which is feral is like redneck basically um, I showed up in this really feral looking ute with this crazy janky looking uh, rhubar in the front with a sheep skull on the front. And it it was a hit. It really That's was. Awesome. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dude, that rhubar yeah. on the front is thick. Oh, like, yeah. It's, just oh, the... it's so heavy. Yeah. yeah, the funny thing about the, the rhubar um, is that um, we did we, we we got it professionally aligned actually we got it professionally aligned and then we put the rhubar on and it weighed down the front so much that the toe was wrong and it blew up the tire because it was that bad oh my. sounds about right so i'm going to send you a link to the fin finale article because okay. the finale shows really the whole arc of uh the whole five four really really it was four weeks of wrenching five weeks of travel that's crazy and, um, you know, it's, you know, just scroll through this and you'll see what we start with, what we had to do and, uh, what we ended up with. Would you do it again? Oh, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't even yeah. know why I asked. I, I mean, I, oh. I can only imagine how awful this is and I'm on board. Like, yeah. <laughs> I lost, how? I lost five years of life expectancy from this, but it's <laughs> worth it. Oh man. How hot was it out there? Uh, it was the winter. So it was actually cold. Oh. Okay, yeah, that would have been a totally different experience opposite side of the seasons. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was almost as cold as California out there, I'll tell you. <laughs> How'd you survive? Okay, yeah. let's scroll through this. Okay, um, can you go back up to the uh, – mm, uh, a little bit more? Okay. So, audio know. listeners, the article on the Autopian is called uh, – Chris, go back to the top row for like one second. <laughs> How an Australian article. town came together to help an American fix the most hopeless car on earth. That. Go read that. Read that. Read that. Okay, so it starts by showing the the, the basically what we started the starting point. So th this shell here is um what we started with the the, the well, this far is one the, was, yeah the parts, parts car, car yeah which became the main car. Um, there, there's not a whole lot going on there really. It, it truly is a shell, and um so this is skipping a lot because it's the final article in the series. But this is us distraught because uh. We realize well, we haven't even started the engine. It's the day before the inspection. We find out that one of our fenders is wrong, which means we can't install our lights. So we have to find a new fender. Our electrical systems, all everything's screwed up at this point. Um, so we, yeah. So this sort of chronicles the six days prior to the Denny Ute muster. There's a broke. Yeah. We are really distraught because Lawrence goes to shift gears because it's a column shift and we're trying to adjust it. It's a pain in the ass. He goes to shift gears and it goes bang. And he and I just both look at each other, and this is like two in the morning. We look at each other, and we're like, that wasn't good, mate. And he <laughs> shattered this cast aluminum piece in the column, and you can't fix that. It's done. Like, you're not yeah, gluing no. that or welding that, that cast, cast iron or whatever it is. But God. anyway, so he goes. He just has extra steering columns on Yes, shelf. because he's obsessed. <laughs> Lawrence Rogers is obsessed with a. With, uh, Chrysler Valiance in Australia. So he had, he had three spare steering columns in his mom's uh, garage. He had so many spare parts. He was ready to rock. There was nothing that was going to stop him from fixing this thing. I really think Lawrence is the most, the best versus, so that's my OG. That's what I was driving in Michigan. Um, that, I think Lawrence is the most, the best versed human on earth when it comes to Australian Chrysler Valiant Utes. I don't think anyone knows more than he does. So here, you know, I'm fixing the steering column. <laughs> and then here, you know, oh, look, local fabricator, Henry, unbelievable guy. He and his, I think, his friend Callum, they're doing, look at the custom work they're doing on this guy. 
And they come, these guys oh are God. doing like insanely expensive custom body work. Like we're talking like half a million t- dollar car type stuff. And they come to, my, to our shed after work, to our garage, to like work on this total pile of garbage. Dude, that's how you know car people just love cars. That's right. Like, totally. <sighs> car that culture all, in Australia. You know? So they were doing wiring and it was just a nightmare. So car culture in in Australia is crazy. They love cars in a way that you really only see, you know, paralleled. I think, you know, rural parts of America sort of loves cars, you know, similarly. But, you know, cities in America are more pockets of car lovers, you know, instead of, Mm -hmm. you know, huge, huge waves of them. Uh, They were just getting sheet metal for door panels. We can just kind of crank through this because it's a bit long, as you can see by the... How many was this article? Uh, I think a it was like 10,000, 12,000. 10, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, yeah. Anyway, we could sort of, yes. maybe. <laughs> oh, look, <laughs> I finally ate something. Look at this. I'm eating a Chico roll, which is some obscure, it's like a burrito, except there's no meat in it. And no one, no one actually knows what's in it. They're just like, just oh, eat it. It's fine. It's not concerning at all. Oh, look, have a look at that. Look at that. Check this out. The newspaper in front of me. The local paper did a story on our um, stupid bill. Oh my god! <laughs> what town is Lawrence in? D- uh, Dubbo. He's actually in a tiny Dubbo, town. Okay. He's actually in a tiny town, like right outside of it. But yeah, Dubbo. I love Australian town names though, because they're always they always have some quirkiness to them. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Plus, you have Denny too. A lot of them are like Aboriginal names. Mm-hmm. Um, like yeah. So shift her blanket, Jesus. Yeah. Like, this is this is a nightmare. It, it literally, it seemed impossible. But the only way that it was possible was this small town in Australia. All the folks just get it. They love cars so much. They're like, oh, some weirdo Australian, uh, some weirdo American is working on a, a shit box. Okay, I'm, I want I want to see this. I want to see what what this dude's up to. And they all come over and they all help. And without them, it would not have been possible. But that's crazy. The, the transformation so in four weeks is crazy. If you, well, listeners, if you're not seeing uh, what we're scrolling through, the transformation <laughs> is sensational. Look at me; I'm sitting on a on a oh, wheel spare. on the on the inaugural spare. drive, oh and I am beat. I I am I'm not well there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! I don't even have t- missing a tail light. The exhaust we just oh, literally Jesus, bolted dude. to the rear bumper. This is dedication at its absolute maximum here. Did, My God. did you get ill at any point? Like just the amount of hours you're in a completely different ecosystem. Like, did you catch nope. a bug at all? No nope. fatigue really screwed, screwed me over though. Like I was making some dumb mistakes, like, like some really like worrisome mistakes. At one point, Lawrence had to teach me how to use a set of pliers. Cause I, I knew how to use it. I was just, my brain was going so slowly. I was working so much and I was still 12 hours, basically 11 hours, like time difference, you know? Mm. And so I'm like, my brain's making these really stupid mistakes. And Lawrence is like, what's going on? Like, there's some re- like turn okay? the screwdriver this way. And I'm like, dude, I don't entirely it's still know what's tidy happening. down under, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're well, just asleep. Yeah. You're, fought, you're like actually working on the car, but you're asleep. It's pretty much. Look at that interior. We put a, an interior together. Yeah, it's not bad. Mexican That's blanket. Yep. yep, we put a dashboard in there, of course. Do they call it a Mexican blanket in Australia too? Yeah, uh, yeah, they do actually. Okay, good. <laughs> Look at that. That's what the original. That, That's the original interior. <laughs> Holy fuck! Crazy so transformation. That. Yep. To that. Yep, it's crazy, isn't it? Oh, oh my god. god! Everybody up to date on their uh, tetanus shots? I absolutely am. I, I get one every week. I, I just, <laughs> I actually have a, an IV drip of it. Yeah. I say, I just I, assumed I, you took pills at this point. Like, instead just, of the um, oh god, like the green juice with all the the fuck, what's it called? Like the wheatgrass or whatever. Just do a tetanus. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, I mean, at this point. I, I'm surprised I haven't. Yeah, tetanus is no joke. So everyone, pay attention. Yeah. Get a tetanus shot. It's really bad. So don't. Seriously. We joke around uh, about it, but it's a huge deal. Yeah, don't fuck around with that. It is. It'll. It'll bite you. 
all yeah. the other projects. <laughs> well, yeah, this is this is like an. We're waiting for the inspector to like tell us, and meanwhile, we're checking out this. Look at that! Look at all those carburetors. This guy in Australia, he's the carburetor guy in the town of Dubbo, and we're talking thousands, literally mountains of carburetors all around, and he has these World War II Merlin engines in his garage. Whoa! Like, what the fuck? It's amazing how much people love cars in rural Australia. It's unreal. Well, to them, it's it's life. Like if you yeah. can't get around. You can die. Oh, of out course. There. Like, you, you, <laughs> I, it really is. I mean, I mean, it is life. Look at that. We passed inspection. What a great moment that was. Because you realize if I hadn't passed inspection, then I would have spent five weeks not really writing nearly as much as I should for a website that we had just started. Literally, the yeah. Utopian was like a couple months mm -hmm. old. And I'm taking all this time off to fix this car. And like, imagine if we hadn't accomplished that and I just flown home. What a massive waste that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> instead we're able to actually get it done it goes on this incredible road trip has a couple of issues and you end up with this just incredible incredible story and um something that's very uh you know aligns very much with the you know our readership and the stuff they're into so yeah. i'm last, very grateful is this last check mark say it's okay to pull a trailer or caravan with that car i would never do that but okay. uh, yeah <laughs> I, that is kind of absurd <laughs> That's, That's like uh, the multiple choice test where you don't know the answers and you're just going, yep, hey, 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 <laughs> who in the bubbles? Yeah, I don't blame you guys going straight to a bar. <laughs> like, oh, we yeah. literally immediately went to a bar when we were done. And and at the bar, he was showing me these Land Cruisers. So in, yeah. in his town, the basically the standard car, like if you're if you're like young and you're just starting out your tradie job, tradie, you know, so someone who's maybe a welder or works on a farm or, you know, yep. does manual labor. Mm -hmm. they call them tradies um the the first thing they'll buy is a land cruiser some kind of land cruiser usually they'll get one without a, a bed so they call it a tray so they'll get rid of the factory tray or it won't have one and they'll all make their own custom trays so this one here you can see has a there's actually a a, a cage on the back so this is mm -hmm. probably someone who hunts um something or or kill hunts or does something with pigs or something i, I think Lawrence might have said this was a pig hunter, mm -hmm. but some of the trays out there, the, the beds, the, the custom beds on these land cruises in Australia are crazy. I mean, these people are welding up these really wild contra contraptions with doors and like, uh, um, you know, drawers and all sorts of like little bins and storage places. And yeah, it's amazing. It's like so we go good. shopping for it, and hopefully the Mitz Alloy guys have something that works for us. But they're just <laughs> yep. like, no, 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 I'll make my own. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Are, aren't the Mitz Alloy guys Australian? Yeah, I, th I think so. <laughs> that, that, tra that tracks. That tracks. Yeah. Okay, so we were just, since we're just talking briefly about Land Cruisers, um, I think Ross, you wanted to tell us about your Lexus. You having some Lexus issues, oh, or? <laughs> uh, yeah, the problems that I've run into of my own accord, obviously. Um, Company called Grom very kindly sent over a CarPlay unit to test out, to install and test out, which it, requires... Is it going to retrofit into your existing screen or? It does. So Ooh. it's a, basically like a little metal box that plugs into the back of the radio, plugs yes. into the back of the screen, keeps it looking totally stock, which is what I wanted because a lot of people are just like plopping, you know, oh, iPads question. on. Mm -hmm. So... The i3 has a similar thing, but I, one thing I don't understand is, do the factory buttons still work? Yes. Like the, the yeah. hard buttons. They are, as far as I know, I haven't tried the steering wheel yet, but they're supposed to. Good Lord. What is happening so, here? Oh, uh, gosh. So that this is actually mostly reassembled at this point. Uh, what? Are you serious? Yeah, no, it was like a as close to dashboard out operation as it could have been without like pulling the airbag. Wow. Um, did you, yeah. you at that point, at what point do you just say, ah, let me just replace the heater core since I have this all out? <laughs> well, the truck's only got like 33,000 miles, so I'm not quite there. Um, what? What? Really? Yeah. What year is this thing? It's a 2018, which like it doesn't have car play. It's 2018, which is kind of silly. So, anyways, so this is um this is day three. This picture is from tonight. Which <laughs> by the time this comes, this show comes out, it'll have been a few weeks ago. Right. Um, but yeah, so the instructions don't exist. The they just don't. They're kind of like generic 
instructions that apply to any and every vehicle that they sell this thing for. So what you um, could do is you could write them and then you have the monopoly on the instructions. I could. Yes. It's actually not a bad idea. And then I could sell it. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. What do you do about that? You, you dirty um, dog. Yeah. So so it's it's been a process. And uh, and incidentally, I have to drive to work tomorrow for the first time in which you is know, why Russ took a picture tonight and was like, "This is how I'm driving to work tomorrow." Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's still everything still works okay. Like the main, the important stuff. The important stuff works. Yeah, there. I so it was a shit show. So you know, I'm I'm working on this. I worked on it Saturday for like three hours, and then it started pouring, and I just went in. And my truck doesn't fit the garage, so I just called it, went inside. I worked on it for like an hour on Sunday and made a little progress, and then tonight I went out after like after work and i had my headlamp on it's dark out and it gets really dark and i look up and my headlamp dies and i was like motherfucker like <laughs> this is just how this whole project's going um and about three minutes after this picture was taken uh i was like i i'm done i i'm just gonna drive the truck with the tunnel off and all the you know switches not there it's like I should probably just start it to make sure that it's not going to throw any lights or codes or anything because the, you know, the buttons for like four low and all that is disconnected Disconnect. right now. Yeah. So I get in the driver's seat and I push the button to start the truck and the lights just go near. I was like, oh, wait, wait. So, so it didn't start at all, or no? I had the door open probably for five hours over the last three days oh, without okay. actually starting the truck so uh yeah, yeah you didn't so. disconnect the battery yeah oh, dude i do that i disconnected the battery for the first two hours but then i got to the point where i was trying there was so much back and forth between like go to the front of the truck put the battery on go back into the truck plug stuff in see if it's oh working. yeah yeah um because i've been there yeah there's no diagram for anything <laughs> about where the wires go or what plugs into what and it's like you know i told chris it's like goosebumps it's like choose your own adventure you know, and hope for the best with this stuff. So, dude, this is a wild. This is a bit of a wild wrenching job you got going on here. This is this is a this is actually you hey. we were just looking at my Australia thing, calling that a nightmare. I think this is more of a nightmare in some ways. I guarantee you, it's not. Uh, the stuff <laughs> I do compared to what you do is baby shit. But uh, no, I I respect again, tearing into a 2018 Lexus electrical system. Is, um, I mean, that is, the, is not for the weak. This and is the second time. I was saying he installed remote start too. So yeah, Ross has been having fun. Yeah, I'm actually start. really I'm really interested in seeing how this turns out because the i3 is a similar retrofit, but I'm I'm wondering like if all of the iDrive buttons are gonna be mm -hmm. useless or if there's a way to program this button to do right. a certain thing. So at one point when I bought Chris's old fourth gen forerunner, I put a CarPlay unit in that and you lost all of the functions on the steering wheel and everything, which was kind of annoying but i also bought the one that was like you know 69.99 on crutchfield instead of the one that was you know 5.99 but by the way this is a very random aside but good at crutchfield ones. okay Autom uh, uh, people in the automotive world know especially the uh, audio files they all know crutchfield yeah crutchfield is a store just outside of the university i went to in charlottesville virginia it's an electrical store. Literally, it's like next to a Harris Teeter, like a few blocks down from. It's like right next to a um, next to a Kroger, in Charlottesville, and it's 100%. like hundred percent. It is. That's and it's so like, funny. Everyone know how did this well, one radio store become the standard dude, for the world? It's they like, did for the U.S. It's crazy. It was those mat those catalogs in the early two thousands, you know, with like the subs and boxes and everything. Yeah, that's like right next to a Kroger. It's like that is a nice, their... nice store, though. It's kind of incredible. I, you know, what? I need to do a deep dive on Crutchfield. Like, how did they get? <laughs> how could it? I don't understand. It's like they're they're a little Charlottesville radio store that everyone in the car world who does audio work knows. Yep. How is that possible, dude? It beats me. Well, but... It availability. They have something for literally every brand like the land cruiser forum crutchfield gets listed all the time for mm -hmm. rear door speakers and all the other stuff like it's like bnh photo for you know cameras and audio stuff which is a tiny little store it's in a New tiny City. little exactly <laughs> yeah but okay so is crutchfield known for its online shop i think it was catalog based when we catalog, all like yeah. learned See, about it right because the difference is like bnh let's be real 
they're known for their online shop. Yeah. But this, this is a little different because, you know, it's normal to have like to see like a small shop that makes it big because of their online presence. Mm -hmm. But that's not really what happened with Crutchfield, I don't think. Like they became known yeah. because of their store and their their catalogs, which is kind of wild. It's similar. I worked at a aftermarket pickup charts company and people loved them because they would print a full catalog, including schematics. Like you could oh, see wow. how everything attached, what bolts you would need. And so there is some of that where people are just like, I got to have the catalog. Huh. I, I, I think this Crutchfield store that you showed might actually be new. Like that looks like a nice building that they got there. It was, I think. Is there an older new. one? I'll look I up old stores. They turned all their catalog money. I wonder if there's a way to figure out how new their store is, huh? This sounds like there could be a store there. In, in any case, the fact that you're mentioning this Charlottesville, like relatively, you know, what I, you know, in some yeah. ways, like the private little Charlottesville audio company in and you're not anywhere near Virginia. It's like, oh, God, no. th there's a story there. There's definitely a story there. That's pretty funny. Yeah, Crutchfield has done well for themselves, but. Yeah, the, there is definitely a new versus old facade. So I don't know if they move locations, but like the, I can't find a high res image of the old facade. Everything's tiny. Hmm. But yeah, anyway, so to close out the Lexus story, hopefully by the time this show airs, everything will be done. And if it's not, the last remaining pieces of my sanity will <laughs> Dude, have long since departed. Ross, Ross is quitting at this point. Is Dude, what he's it's, saying. it's no, it's like one of those projects where every single thing fights back, you know, like, so the metal box that you're supposed to mount, I'm putting it in the center console, right? In order to get it to mount in the center console, I have to take out the GMRS that lives next to it because there's not enough room to get a drill in. It's just like one of those things where every single thing has it's like it's like uh one step forward you know one and a half steps back i was like flip that yeah, it's two it's, steps forward one step back two steps forward one step back two steps forward yeah. it doesn't feel like it <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't feel, feel like, like it. no no where david's was like eight hundred thousand steps in reverse with his ute <laughs> to then take five steps forward <laughs> phil man your car is at least with mine I knew that it's such a simple machine. Eventually, like eventually, as T goes to infinity, it will be completed. Whereas mm -hmm. with yours, it's so modern. It's like, man, you could screw some like some sort of electrical thing up and some computer oh. and you could be chasing stuff for. Don't put that fear in my head. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> I'm um, going in as blind, man. I'm, but also, I'm, I don't know I, shit about this stuff. Also, I have to say between the two of us, you know, I'm like. I'm working on a really old car from the sixties and, but you're working on like a pretty valuable luxury car that like you daily drive. It's like, I feel like the stakes yeah. for you. I mean, I had some stakes obviously, but like, you know, yeah. Stakes are hot. My daughter rides in this. The stakes are not low. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, and, yeah, and, and she's going to be pissed um, if you don't get Android auto. Right. <laughs> so, you, you know, yeah. No, she's a, she's a happy baby. She likes the truck most oh, of the okay. time. Yeah. Uh, she's usually in the back because she's in a rear facing car seat. So she's got the mirror and she's just looking like at what we're going towards. And I'm playing podcasts and she's going, bah, 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 bah. it's pretty funny. But sounds very much like a child. Yeah. It turns out baby <laughs> is, is in fact a baby. Baby will baby. But, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I got to get this thing done um, and start writing it up because it's overdue and there are other projects. So it, it's funny that we projects. that you've taken this route because, David, I bought a 2000 LX470 with the standard or with the factory head unit in it still and now have to figure out my own version. Um, so, which, okay, when, when did that happen? Uh, like a month ago. Like now wow. it's been very recent. So it's... We Champagne? were we, no, it's um, it's like the off white color, and I can't remember exactly. No, I'm, I'm into that. I actually like the. I actually um, like them in white. Here, I got it. I got an image. Um, By the way, which is if you guys don't have one of these things, these portable is that your little jump pack? box things? Yeah, invaluable. 
I used to have those, but the problem is I would always leave them outside. I left everything outside in Michigan and they would expand and just stop working. Oh my God. Got them, they, they were short. <laughs> it's, anyway, that could go very badly, very quickly. So anyway, uh, yeah, that thing is remember. okay. Hold on. Keep it there. Yeah. It's beautiful. It, it's, it's fantastic. Legitimately beautiful. The, the, the white color looks great. The white on black, the contrast is kind of like a, a stormtrooper look. The thing is fantastic. And we're gonna beat well it. Well done up. on this. Great find. <laughs> we're gonna beat it up. I feel so bad. <laughs> and it's like subtly built, you know. It's not like crazy, crazy. You know, it's it's really mm-hmm. nice. Well, and that's the thing is like, uh, so I I just took my wife's daily driver, which is a 2008 Sequoia with skids and sliders out to Moab. Um, cool had a great time brought it back we acquired this truck right before that trip but didn't have time to get some kids and sliders underneath this otherwise i would have driven this um but even while i was out there talking to people they're like don't do more like and so this will get skids it'll get sliders maybe you'll get a locking diff in the back because when you add a locking diff no one realizes you've added in a locking diff and so you can do more and people are like wow that's great and you're like yes mm-hmm. it is um, but really, I don't think we're going to do much more to it. We're just kind of, kind of leave it as is. We got to get some Bluetooth in there, obviously, um, for, for audio purposes, but it's, to be honest, it's, it's going to be my oldest son's to school and back car slash camping trail rig. And it's right. He's not old enough yet to drive it to school. So like I'll drive the, my daughter goes to the uh, daycare in the suburban, and then I drive this to go get lunch in the afternoon. Like, <laughs> so I've been having a blast. That's awesome. Swapping man. back and forth. That thing. Okay. So, how are the leather seats? Because I know those tend to crack on, up front sometimes. They are in pretty good shape, but you can tell like there have been some repairs done. Um, and I know an upholstery guy here in town. So, when they finally do go, I will, I will go to him and I will get them recovered. Um, but no, they're, they're in pretty great shape. I don't know if I have yeah. interior photos or not. So I haven't, yeah. I need, I need to go take it and do like a full, here you go. I got an interior shot. I um, really appreciated mine when I owned it. It wasn't the right car for me, but I really like the, it was well, really well engineered. Mine had 265,000 miles and it was so, it was, it was great mechanically. Overbuilt. It really was overbuilt. And it, like, that's the part I'm in, like the Sequoia has the five, seven. So it's got an entire liter more of capacity. This four, seven in this truck feels perfect. And the, the wheels and the tires are a little oversized. It it feels great. It just, it soaks everything up. I just, it's it doesn't, it, truck too. and it has the AHC delete already done. So I don't have to go mess with that. My AHC worked just fine, actually. Well, my Sequoia has the AHC as well. So that's oh. <laughs> I get I live in tick, both tick, worlds. Tick. Yeah. 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 You know what? How is it that in the overlanding community, Toyota is so popular in the US? There are certain um, how did that come about? I mean, obviously around the world they had old old land cruisers. Here we right. never really got this. I mean, we did, but like really the people I feel like if you went to some kind of overlanding meet here, you'd see a lot of like nice Lexuses and Forerunners and Tacomas, right? And um, you would not see any Z, any Z, You would see mm-hmm. very few Jeeps. Like Jeeps are just not really. It's not happening. Mm-hmm. And Land Rovers, eh? It's really Toyota. They own it. They own mm-hmm. that space. And um, yeah, I think yeah. it's the it's the I hate mud community coming together with like the overland uh, movement at the same time, basically. Yeah, oh. it's like something else that those guys could do with their Land Cruisers. And then tacos were just yeah. there have always been tacos. They've always been accessible. I think it's yeah, I like it. It's a it's a really fun community that's like creative in like a way that that's, you know, some of the most fun that you can have with cars is involves like being creative. So like whether you're a low rider with hydraulics or mm-hmm. um, if you're, a, you know, if you're a rock crawler and you're putting, you know, crazy Dynatrack axles, or if you're an overlander and you're building out your machine into something livable, something with cool. a built-in stove or whatever. Yes. It's like, 
It's just so much water fun. systems. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, or, Bumpers or, with water storage. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's like um, that side of cars, the creative side of cars where no two are the same, you know, mm-hmm. like no two, uh, um, you know, I mean, there are plenty of that are the same. There are obviously right. plenty of Jeep Wranglers on 37s that are very similar, but mm-hmm. <laughs> very rare to find two that are exactly the same because um, there's just so many ways to do it. You know, low riders, same thing. So many ways to like airbrush and, oh. and different hydraulics I mean, and wheels and stuff. And then you guys like, like overlanding, like different ways to do it. And then rock crawling. It's like the that's cliche awesome. is that it just, you know, it, it reflects your personality and who you are, you know, like it's, well, it does a projection of what you like to do. And well, have you guys felt that that's accurate? Like based on your experience? it's either extremely accurate or the polar opposite where somebody uses it as their like outlet and channel, you know, and they're like super conservative and they go wild on their, on their builds because it's like, you know, they're, uh, I, I like things to look release. a little more stockish. That's me. I like, yeah. I don't want all the extra stuff, which sucks in an Instagram world because all my rigs are really boring looking. Um, Just like the LX is the most wild one we have. Like there's, there's literally nothing else. Like, I need to find a way to like add the max tracks to the top of stuff because that way at least I'm an Instagram influencer. <laughs> That's right. Get those bright orange max tracks. <laughs> you, know what you should do. You should uh, on the Sequoia because the shape in silhouette is not that dissimilar. You should put the max max tracks along the side of the Sequoia like the cactus. Like the weird, you know, the citron cactus. That's oh, the weird citron. yeah, yeah, there you go. That yeah, yeah. so funny. You know what would be cool? Yeah. Has anybody ever integrated like a Max Trax into bodywork? So that um, you could like pull it off? Didn't like, someone do some kind of... I feel like Jeep did a concept. Uh, I don't know. That new... The it was Ineos, like a Mopar thing. There's also Ineos Grenadier that you can oh. get the tool rail thing along the side. Oh, okay. Also, can we agree that um, the Toyota Land Cruiser crowd is exactly the same person slash demographic as the Rivian crowd? The R1T, R1S. Um, These are basically Land Cruiser. There's Land Cruisers when they, when they like. I would bet uh, all the tra- all the trade ins at the Rivian dealership that okay. doesn't exist. Land Cruisers, new cruisers, leased and. 200 series, like late 200 cruisers. Yeah. We're not talking 80s. Like, you know, yeah, nobody's yeah. turning in their 80 series on. No, 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 no. no, no. 80 <laughs> and early 100 yeah. series guys are not Rivian guys. Well, I bet you plenty of 100 series guys are. Or at the very least, I, I would say, at the very least, most 100 series and up people would look at a Rivian and be like, I'm into that. Like, there's a lot of like, I, mean, I don't know, the vibes are similar. And, and also, <laughs> Also, I went to the Rivian launch and uh, some of the engineers had land cruisers. So that, that might be like, That's you know, tainting yeah. my, yeah. <laughs> I, I drive the shit out of Rivian every day. Just saying. I'm, I think there is going to be a crossover of the Venn diagram just because like, it's like the, it's the closest to a land cruiser equivalent in a fully electric vehicle. In the EV world. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. But I don't think it's a hundred percent because there's a, there's a lot of Land Cruiser guys that are like, no, this shit's gonna last forever. I'm not ever owning another vehicle. Like, that's true. That is very true. That's, that's a good point. True. It's like, why would I trade in my Land Cruiser? It only has 180 thousand miles. Right. It's got another 100 thousand, 200. You know, it's like, yeah, dude, that yeah. is the crazy thing. I will say, like, when I bought that LX470, one thing that astounded me is that when you shop for a Jeep, and I'm not just saying this like. Uh, Poke, to poke fun at anyone like this is literally true when you shop for a jeep if it's got two hundred thousand miles on it it's pretty cheap like mm-hmm. you're like if, if you if you're buying an x even an xj they're going up with two hundred thousand miles like that's starting to really max out at about five grand let's be real yeah and yeah. if it's a zj with two hundred thousand miles yeah. Woo, whatever you got in your pocket you got chew bubble gum 3500 bucks yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably on a second engine and transmission and yeah Oh yeah, a ZJ with two hundred thousand is like a twenty five hundred dollar car. Like that's it, if it's in good shape. A Land Cruiser with two hundred thousand miles is not a big deal, and and that yeah. in in the Jeep world, it literally is 
like it changes the way that you think about how much you're going to spend on it. And though in the Land Cruiser, it also obviously affects value. You're still like I bought one with 265,000 miles. I'm like, this is a terrible idea. Why would I do that? Like if I bought a 265,000 and I bought a Jeep with 260,000 miles on it, it was, you know, good. But I bought it for 800 bucks because <laughs> you're never going to convince anyone that your 260,000 mile Jeep is good. You're not going to mm -hmm. do it. Forget mm -hmm. it. It's not going to happen. But the Land Cruiser, you can actually yeah. convince someone that at 260,000 miles, it's good. Because it's usually, like, it usually is. Yeah, like, it is. That's crazy to me. I mean, there's always exceptions to the rule, but like, what's the trope about Toyota builds the Land Cruiser for like a, a 25 lifespan. years. Yeah. That's twice as long as, as what the average car is or something like that. Where Range Rovers are built to like five to 10 years because they know <laughs> they're going to be in a new one in two. Yep. Yeah. They're standard yeah. customers. So David, to your point, my 05 uh, V8 Forerunner, we bought with 223,000 miles on it. My you sold it 80... to me with 200 and 60 ish, 67 or something. Yeah, it was right up on timing belt replacement. Yeah. And the crazy um, thing is, you guys are not, you're not, it's not like you guys are like die hard, like I'm going to wrench and replace engines and like I'm willing to God, do all this no. crazy shit. You're like relatively sensible in that. And you're like, yeah, I just bought a 200 and some thousand. And yeah. it's, it's not a crazy thing in your world. That's the thing no, about it. No. My, my 80 series, I got with 270 on the clock and drove Jeez. it to 308 and it sold it and somebody's still driving it. The Sequoia we got came with 179 on the clock. And then the LX has 200K. And I, I didn't bat an eye at any of that. Like, to be honest, the Sequoia has probably had like the most done to it since then. But like, part of that was we weren't sure if we were giving that to our oldest son. So we wanted mm -hmm. to make sure it was completely safe and ready to go. Um, yeah. So, mm -hmm. and it, that one had a fuel pump die on us. And that one, that was a sucky bill because that one just kind of came out of nowhere but we don't there's no car payments on any of those like it's free cars <laughs> so that's wild. You, i will say first price and... i will say the the jeep four liter engine if you keep it cool it'll go 300 plus thousand miles no problem mm -hmm. and that's but, what i had in my tj i loved it but here's the thing though even as amazing as that engine is and it is my favorite engine i bought when I fire up the two, the four point seven liter with two hundred sixty five thousand miles, and I open the hood and I listen, and it's unbelievable. Whisper quiet. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, even I have to admit, as many like I've had some really nice running two hundred sixty plus thousand four liters, but you open the hood and it goes clack 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 clack, and it's mm -hmm. normal. It's gonna mm -hmm. last forever, but it ain't it ain't butter smooth like that four yeah. seven. Let's mm -hmm. be real. Yeah. I love that four seven. Yeah, four seven. The five great. seven, I think, sounds like a tractor. The four seven sounds fantastic. <laughs> uh, with an exhaust, the five seven sounds glorious. I have a friend with a hundred series, Ron's Ron's acquaintance, Yop, who has an amazing hundred series. He's got a Borla exhaust on that four seven, and it is very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish Borla made something for the GX, but I also don't because that would just be a something else to do purchase. yeah oh, question <laughs> on your gx do you have a fold-out rear table that I comes off yet. of the that I comes do. off of the swing oh you do yeah oh on the, yeah. In, on the inside of the door yeah it's from an australian company called kaon k-a-o-n i installed one of those oh really I, I think i think it mounts to the actual plastic trim right you have to drill holes and wash yeah and, and then it, it, there's a couple pieces like two screws that go to the sheet metal behind it mm. but yeah i have used it for uh making meals uh fixing vehicles and uh changing diapers i was just saying please oh, don't change a diaper on that thing. wow you put a child on that <laughs> oh yeah kidding yeah. Dang, okay yeah, that's it's a real very, faith very very useful tool she's a reasonable sized kid too like she's she not is. like a massive kid like no she was probably 13 pounds when i was doing that so about about the weight of a uh, a CV. Oh yeah, CV actually. <laughs> That's actually a really funny way to equate child's weight. To oh, car well, parts. Yeah. So how much yeah. in car parts does the your kid weigh? Yeah, your kid. How long did, a, uh, in the delivery? Long ago, you my my kid weighs uh, one BFG MT. One one unit bearing. 
<laughs> Dude, I got a kid who's all four tires. Like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> dang, okay. Getting older, He's a big huh? kid. Oh yeah. yeah, my kids are huge. Oh man! All right, guys. I uh, it is very late on the East Coast. Super yeah. duper early tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> Ross, you, you, you got to commute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I actually, I actually, in a dismantled car, you poor bastard. You get some yeah. sleep, Ross. Yeah, the dismantled I'll, I'll wrap car it up real is, fast. But... So you can rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. We're on just about all of them. God damn it, there's that one that that guy asked me about, and I still haven't remembered to check my notes. Uh... Um, it's on my phone. I got to figure it out. Is it like Fliver or something like that? No, it was. Fiber, God, what did he call Fiber. it? Um, Castbox. I got to see if how to get it on Castbox. That doesn't sound like a chatbot made its name up or anything it's probably ai created so um you can like and subscribe on youtube you can follow david uh at david n tracy and at the autotopian but it's underscore the underscore autotopian right the underscore autopian really you should just visit the autopian.com yes highly recommended Oh, and then Ross is no, not like the one from friends. And I'm at overlanding dad. And if you had been going to the Autopian, you would have been following along with all these articles and having a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, I will give some SEO crap to your, the, the final rap article does not have the word Ute in the title. <laughs> That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> Damn. Okay. I'm going to have to change that. I work at SEO all the time, David. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. 